Excel has a beautiful collection of functions. You use them over and over again. They are very helpful. You don't have to invent the wheel all the time. But sometimes you do. Because some Excel functions that you would like to use over and over again don't exist yet. Fortunately, you can create your own Excel functions. They are called UDFs or User Defined Functions. And they are created in Visual Basic. I will just show you how to create your functions. If you need more help later on, uh, I, would re I would suggest that you use either my book Excel 2007 for Scientists or my CD-ROM Excel 2007 for Scientists or my Excel 2007 VBO screen. Another CD that shows you much more about Visual Basic than just functions. I will focus on functions today. All functions return something. I'm not going into all the details of it, but the function int in Excel returns an integer. Some functions return a long, a double. I have explained here what the size of the memory space is that they use. And I want you to know there is one special one that's called variant. The variant uses much more memory space than the others. But the advantage is that it can hold anything of the above. Not just a single number or a single word or a single date, but also multiple values. And that is great for what we are going to use later on. Let's start with the following problem. We have a series of observations on a series of plates or done by a series of analysts. And we would like to know what the standard error is. The standard error is an important calculation. If you do statistical work, you have to calculate first what the standard deviation is, what the number of cases in your sample is, and then you calculate the standard error. So that is a lot of work extra. So we are going to make a function that does that based on the standard deviation in cell E1, the count in E2. And then later on, we will make an even a better function that can use all these cells in a range. Let's start with the first one. Here is the situation that I just showed you. We are going to do the standard error based on the standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of cases. We do that in Visual Basic. How do we get there? Alt F11. It opens Microsoft Visual Basic for applications. You need a module for your functions. If you don't have one yet, insert a module. I have one already, so I'm not going to create another one. You can just use one module and put all your functions in there, or you can use multiple modules. We are going to create the first function in, let's say, module 1. It calculates the standard error. Standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of cases. Type in Visual Basic the first line. You just type. But try not to type errors. No typos, please. I call the function standard error. It, like all other functions, it returns something. I decided it should return a double. That has a 15-digit precision. In order to calculate it, I need two kinds of information. I need two arguments. The variable standard deviation, that holds a double. And the variable size, size holds an integer, or a long, if you want to. Because an integer goes only to 32,000. But if you do, you have to declare that as long. At the end of the line, you type enter. And it automatically finishes the function. Inside the function, we are going to say what standard error should do. So we type standard error equals the standard deviation that comes from this variable divided by the square root function of Visual Basic based on the size of your sample. That's the function we have now. I did that already for you. It is right here in Visual Basic. We switch from Visual Basic, way at the bottom, 
to Excel. And we are going to find the function standard error. Probably not right there. It is either under all or user defined. I'm going to all. Standard error. And you notice it's right there. What is your standard deviation? E1. What is the size of your sample? 18 or E2. Standard error is 0 0.07. The disadvantage of this function is that you have to calculate first the standard deviation and the count. Can't we do that in our new function here? Sure, if we could use this range from B1, control shift arrow down, to B18, that would be fantastic. Let's implement that new function. It's the standard error based on a range. We type again in Visual Basic the name of this new function, function I call it SE range. It returns a double. All it needs to know is which range do you want to use. I call it with variable name series, but any name goes, as long as you declare it of the range type. Don't forget your enter at the end of the line, and it finishes the function. And inside you are going to say what should that function do. Fortunately there is something that is called worksheet function in Excel. In Excel Visual Basic. When you type the word worksheet function and then a dot at the end, it gives you a listing of all the functions that Excel provides. And one of them is standard deviation for a sample. It needs to know on what range to base that, which is of course the series, that is the variable name that we had imported as a range, divided by the square root, which is a VBA function, based on the Excel worksheet function count. What does it count? The range series. Please make these two lines that I have split here one line in VBA. I had to split them here so I could show it on the screen. Let's use this new function. Let's use that new function. You can call it from fx or you can just type it in the cell. We call it se range. Select it. At the moment you have that open parentheses. You don't know in which order your variables are. So if you press Ctrl Shift A, it tells you that it, all it needs to know is one variable. It's the series starting in B1, Control shift arrow down, and enter. And that gives you the same result, but it did it in internal steps without using that. Go for the next problem. In this case, the problem is that if you want the, the average of all these standard deviations, that will not work because of these errors. Function is a little bit more complicated than before. We type it in VBA. I call it a mean with no errors. It returns a double. It uses a range again under the name series. F finish the function. Mean no errors. We need the worksheet function average. Based on another worksheet function, if error. If there is an error, use nothing. Otherwise the series itself. Function is called mean no errors. Created it already in Excel. All we have to do now is go to Excel. That last calculation didn't work. The average does not accept errors. So let's delete that one. And let's call the, the mean no errors. Control shift A. What is your series? E1, E2, sorry, through E19. Let's go for one more situation, the, the last one, which is more complicated. And then I think you will have enough feeling how to make functions. You, you probably know that Excel nowadays has a count if function. It counts in the range of column B how many times we found A, B, C in A. Five times. Then it calculated the mean with an average if. There is no standard deviation if. So we need to create it. 
type your new function. I call it standard deviation if it returns a double, but this time it needs three arguments, three variables. One of the range type, all the, the values. Then another one of the range type of all the criteria. And tell me which criterion you want to use, which is a string type. Finish your function. This time we need two internal variables. You declare them with the dim statement or keyword. Declare the variable i of the long type. And then we declared a temporary range of the variant type. Remember, variants can hold anything, even multiple values. And the standard deviation range has multiple values. So we are going to store them in that variant. Then we are going to loop through that variant and throw out all the values that don't qualify. First we have to fill the temp range with the standard deviation range. So they are both now basically identical. But in the temp range, I'm going in the temporary range, I'm going to uh, replace values that don't qualify with nothing. We do that with a for loop. I is your counter that we declared as a long. It can run from one to the number of cells we have found in the criteria range. Close the loop with a next statement. And each time we loop, if the criteria range, the cell in row 1, i is 1 when we start, column 1, if that is not the same as the criterion we have implemented, then put nothing in that temp range or replace it with nothing. So we end up with a temp range that has only values in the cells that qualify. So we close the function with what it should return. We use the worksheet function standard deviation on the temp range that has sometimes values replaced with nothing. We are going to test that on our Excel sheet. Equals standard deviation if. Which arguments do we need? Control shift A. We need a standard deviation range, B1, control shift arrow down. This time make sure that you lock those cell references so I can copy that formula downwards into G3, G4, etc. You lock it by pressing F4 on your keyboard. Double click on criteria range, that has to be A1 through A18. Don't forget to lock it. And finally your criterion is in this case ABC. Don't lock that one. That has to change from D2 into D3, D4, D5. Accept the formula and click it down with a double click. This is just the tip of the iceberg, of course. I recommend the CD Excel 2007 for scientists. It has much more than what I just discussed with you. If you prefer a book over a CD-ROM, go for the book, Excel 2007. And in addition, you may want to buy Excel 2007 VBA CD-ROM. I wrote all three of them. My last name is pronounced for Schuren. You can find this at MrExcel.com, of course Amazon.com. And I hope you will feel very comfortable using all this information.